So the other day I dug out a document that contains some interview questions that I actually got asked when I went to one of my junior developer interviews and I thought it'd be useful to share it with you too so you get an idea of some of the types of interview questions that you might get asked and these are actually technical interview questions and the role was kind of more of a PHP full stack role um, so they kind of lean a little bit more towards that but it's quite useful to go through these just so you get an understanding of the types of questions that you might get asked at your interviews. So I'm not going to share with you any of the answers in this video uh, but I'll put a link in the description below uh, with a document that contains the uh, answers that I actually gave or the rough answers that I gave to these questions when I actually went to the interview. So we'll go through them now and the first question you might recognize it's actually a variant on the FizzBuzz challenge and the question says to create an algorithm that puts the integers from 17 to 53 however for multiples of 2 print foo instead of the number and for the multiples of 5 print bar for numbers which are multiples of both 2 and 5 print foo bar. So generally you would do this with the numbers 3 and 5 and the words fizz and buzz but it's exactly the same challenge uh, so it's all the more reason to go and have a look at FizzBuzz. I did a video on the channel about that uh, a while ago, so I'll put a link to that in the description below as well. But it's a classic interview question algorithm to do, and it's a very basic challenge, but it can catch people off guard, so it's worth having uh, some solution in your head of how you would solve the FizzBuzz challenge. So question two, as I say, this is more PHP related, so it's starting to ask about SQL databases. So the question is, in SQL database tables, why is redundant data, in other words, the same data stored in multiple tables, generally a bad thing? So this is kind of asking more of your understanding about databases and some of the processes that are involved in it. So it's worth, before you go into your interview, just having an understanding of the different types of databases and coming up with some reasons why you think redundant data and some of the processes that are involved around databases are a good or a bad thing. And question three kind of leads on to that as well. So it says in SQL database tables, why might redundant data be necessary in real world applications? And that's quite a tricky question because you've just been asked to say like, why is redundant data bad? And then you're saying, well, wh when would you use it? So it's almost having like strengths and weaknesses for different technologies. So that's probably a good point to take away. You know, not all technology will solve every problem. It'll have advantages and disadvantages. So it's worth kind of having pros and cons for different solutions for different technologies when you're learning about different things. So question four uh, is quite an interesting one, but it's basically giving you an Apache web server configuration. And it's saying, why doesn't this work correctly? And can you uh, suggest a solution to make it work? So if you've never worked with Apache or any kind of hosting technologies, then this question is probably gonna be impossible for you because you'll have never seen this before. Uh, but I think the point to take away from this question is your chances are you're going to be asked something around uh, environments or DevOps, for example. So you need to have a small understanding of that, uh, even at a junior developer level. So you're not going to be expected to be an expert, but obviously you need to have some idea of how you might deploy a site uh, and how the different technologies, in this case Apache, uh, would be involved in that process. So if you're interested in what the solution is to that question, then check out the uh, PDF with the uh, information in the description below. So question five uh, is PHP related, but it could equally be asked in many other languages, including JavaScript. And the question says, in PHP, for what reasons might you initialize strings with single quotes instead of double quotes? And the answer for that one is fairly straightforward, but it's quite nice to have a language-based simple question, just to know that you're on the right track. Uh, and the interviewer wants to know that you've got a good understanding of the basic language that your uh, job is going to be using. So uh, this sort of question uh, is quite common to get as well. And question six is a bit of a long question. It's more of a discussion really, but there's a simple answer to it, which I'm sure you'll get just from reading it. But it's basically saying in development teams, people will be building and maintaining uh, software at the same time. So they may be working on one particular aspect of that or different parts of a project at, the, at different times and you want to kind of keep all those changes uh, floating around and then you need to kind of obviously bring them together at some point. Um, so what system would you use to manage this and why would you choose that particular solution? So hopefully the answer to that one is screaming out at you. It's, it's fairly simple, but there's more of a discussion about uh, how that particular technology works. And this question is quite good for talking about 
how a particular technology helps teams and of course the interview is looking at how well you all work in a team and what kind of contributions you can bring to it as well. So question six is quite an important question although the answer is quite simple the discussion around it would be very useful to the interviewer. So the next question is asking you uh, about modern websites and what type of design pattern you would use to make a site work across each uh, device that the site is being accessed from. And that again is a simple question, but there's room for discussion around that about how that technology can be implemented. And also talking about various different design patterns which might be related to CSS or potentially JavaScript as well. So that question's again a fairly simple answer but opens up discussion for the interview to kind of really understand uh, your understanding about uh, responsive design in this case. So the next question is quite a tough one really uh, if you have no background knowledge on this but it's basically saying what is object-oriented programming and the benefits of using that particular type of language. So at this point if you've got no idea what object-oriented programming is you might need to go and do a bit of research as to what that is and what that design pattern is used for and the, the problems it solves. But as mentioned before there are pros and cons for using different types of technologies and design patterns so make sure you can back up your arguments as to why it's good and why also why it's bad because the interview will want you to sort of balance that when, when you should use that type of technology uh, when it's good to use it and when it should be avoided. So the next question is one which is designed to make you think a little bit about how uh, software is put together and the various different pieces that are involved in it and it's basically saying if you were running an e-commerce application that had levels of stock how would you manage a situation where there were two customers that were interested in buying the last unit of stock for an item so there's only one item left in stock how would you ensure that those people would be able to purchase it with uh, the maximum possibility of the item being sold. So this is a, a common situation where you're going to have a, an e-commerce store and you don't want to sell the same last unit twice, but you also want to make sure that the, the person who's buying it actually completes that transaction as well. So there are different things to think about in this situation, but essentially uh, we want to make sure that we don't sell the unit twice, so we need some kind of atomic action that prevents that from happening. Uh, because we'd have one angry customer left where that didn't actually get the item that they purchased but also what if that person at the last minute who is trying to buy that that item changes their mind and the item becomes unsold so you need to think about the people that are involved in this the customers for example and also the processes that are running on top of the database and how we would maybe notify the customer if the item became available again and maximize the way that we could actually sell that unsold product. So the last question I'll give you is about MVC and the question basically just says explain the benefits of using an MVC framework. So again this has come up a few times within these questions but it's weighing up the pros and cons of a particular design pattern or technology and not saying that it's completely good and not completely bad but the, why you should use it in some situations and why you shouldn't use it in others. And these questions are basically designed by the interviewer just to get an understanding of the knowledge that you may or may not have about these particular technologies. And if you can't answer one of those questions or you give a fairly weak answer as to why a particular technology is good or bad, that's not the end of the world because it's just giving the interviewer some information about what your strengths and weaknesses are in terms of your knowledge of different technologies. So that's pretty much all of the questions that I was asked in that interview from a technical point of view at least anyway and hopefully that's given you some insight into the kind of things that you might get asked at a particular interview. As I said this is a little bit PHP biased um, but I think most of the questions there are kind of relevant to any type of web development interview that you might go to. So if you want a list of those questions to look at and mull over there's a link in the description below with some sample answers that I gave to those questions and it would be useful before any interview just to go through these sorts of questions just to prepare yourself for some potential questions that interviewers might ask because they're not going to ask anything that's going to be too dissimilar to things along these lines, especially the questions that are probing your knowledge in terms of different technologies and design patterns. So hopefully you found that useful, and if you are going for an interview soon, best of luck with that, and I'll see you next time.